All right, first day of uh, corn spraying here. It's our last pass of the year, so we only do the one post-emerge spray. Let's get it going. So first thing we put in is the AMS, that kind of conditions the water. We have really hard groundwater here. So it just allows the other chemicals and everything to mix better with the hard water. That's why the AMS uh, goes in first. Then I was putting in four gallons of lotus. It's either lotus or calisto, depending on what crop will be on these fields next year. We use lotus when it's gonna be black beans next year. Callisto, which is cheaper, uh, that works good if it's gonna be soybeans next year. But there's carryover in lotus, or excuse me, there's carryover in Callisto, so you have to use lotus if you're gonna try to grow edibles. This little deal's real slick. I just shut it with my knife in there, didn't I? Yep. Nothing wrong with sterilizing your knife. Well, we were going for 260. Not bad. Brody's in a cornfield? Are you kidding me? Yep. We got both sprayers going in corn today because it's starting to get, you know, to that height where it's getting kind of urgent. And also, worse than this, this is bigger than a pop can. You don't want pop can sized weed or bigger, they're harder to kill. So. We'll just hand pick a couple of these big ones. Anyways, trying to get caught up on corn. We finished our black beans and soybeans were caught up on what we want to get sprayed. We're just hitting it harder, two sprayers than corn. So we did swap out a couple of nozzles or flip them, flip them all to a different nozzle because we're spraying this at 12 and a half gallons an acre rather than soybeans and black beans at 15 to 18 gallons per acre. So, a little different nozzle setup on this since it don't have the pulsating like Eric's runs. I would like that on this sprayer. So as the spray tender operator, I try to anytime he comes by me, just look over as he's spraying for uh, any plug nozzles. Plug a nozzle, it ain't gonna spray for about a row and You'll see that. The weeds will just be streaks of weeds for one row. It don't happen that often, but occasionally. But for not having rain on this, since it's been planted, this is really looking surprisingly very well, actually. That is except for where the gophers decided to harvest. Three to four, ro four rows, looks like. Nice. So it is a beautiful day for spraying. We got a southeast wind. For whatever reason, we never get those, and we've had them for like three weeks. Can't get a northwest wind if you tried to buy one. Anyway, it's time to mix up another load here, and be prepared for when he gets back. I think I'm gonna have to run to town because we are very low on water. That's about 450. That is about 1100. So I got enough for one more load probably, and then I gotta go to town because we've been spraying so aggressively that we've drained our groundwater tank and that's a five gallon per minute pump or well. It's gonna take many days to fill that tank.
you guys saw about 30% of what we just did because while I'm putting in AMS and the Lotus, Randy is over by the truck where the inductor tanks are putting in atrazine, Roundup, an adjuvant, Wrath. I think that's all he's doing, so three chemicals. So yeah, a lot going on. We've got 2,060 gallons we put on, so that's about 165 acres. Uh, the pump does like 230 gallons a minute, so there ain't a ton of time to move you guys around uh, and try to show you everything at once. But super nice with the side inductor on this sprayer. That's where we always do the AMS because it's got the little agitation nozzle, nozzles that uh, help suck that dry AMS down into the sprayer tank. And then the little jugs, like the one gallon jugs of Lotus, or if we've got other uh, smaller use products that we don't have in bulk totes, we just put them in on the sprayer inductor a lot of times because it's easy. You can dump them in, rinse them out, and uh, the other guys, like Randy or the, the water tender, he's busy with all the other chemicals. So a lot more going on in uh, post-emerge spraying compared to pre-emerge. Pre-emerge, it's one chemical, and that's nice. Find my line here. Okay, auto boom. I do not run the center, center, cen center sensor on the auto boom. Uh, it's got three, one on each wing. I shut off the center because uh, I set that at the height I like and just let the booms do what I need them to do. You set your height here, so I'm at 38 inches. We kind of just judgment call, maybe go a little higher and pre-emerge. Um, you want to be over the top of the weeds, obviously, but when it gets really bad, you got to get over the top of the weeds. That ain't happening in this field, uh, nor any other field I've seen, but if you get big water hemp or something, and like, and I mean really big, and you don't have your boom high enough, and you don't spray the whole plant, you ain't going to kill it. And you really ain't going to kill water hemp most of the time anyways, unless you've got a really hot tank mix. But usually the water hemp's an issue in the edible bean fields just because we can't use as strong of chemicals. And once they get over four inches tall, they're very hard to kill. So, we got auto boom. I've got my steerable hitch. Want that in auto. 20, 150 gallons total. I brought some back to the truck. Let's lower that some. For those that don't know, everything from this sprayer is controlled here. I can change between my rinse tank and my main tank. Uh, where it's sucking water from. I can change if I want it to send it to the booms or recirculate it back into the tank. Uh, agitation, when we're filling, I turn agitation on. When we're done filling, I shut it off. I think some guys maybe run a little agitation all the time. I like to have enough pressure to keep my tips going at high rates of speed, so. Shut agitation off. Fence row nozzles, those are nice. Not gonna worry about that right now, but yeah. I've got, uh, oh, we're over here. I've got 160 acres done so far on this field. So when I got here this morning, I had some Stinger, which is a chemical we use for uh, spraying thistles on the side of the field. And I had some of that left over from last week, so we emptied that into Doug and into a tote so we can use that later on maybe to spray CRP or something. Really good thistle killer. That kind of took up the morning when I pressure washed the tractor and the sprayer because I uh, had to get the 28% off since we were done with that. This 28% loves to rust. So let's see if we can't get going. Okay so doing 12 and a half gallon work that's pretty normal. Um, we are pulsating again. I shut that off for pre-emerge. Uh, so we're using the Hawkeye Raven system, and I can set my pressure gallons per acre, and it gives me a speed range, usually like 9 to 10 mile an hour speed range from slowest to fastest, that the nozzles I have will allow me to do. Once you get going too fast, it can't pulsate fast enough and stay on rate. So my max speed that I can do with these Turbo T's is 12 miles an hour, which I might get into some nice square fields and rotate all the 
nozzles to a bigger tip so I can go faster, but we'll see. So we are spraying um, this lotus on like six or seven different fields. We're gonna have roughly 900 acres of edibles next year. And so we're just making sure to use the right chemical on them. So I'm kind of bouncing around today. I started at the home place. Then we're gonna be going south. Then I got one of my fields over east and a couple more Larsons around here. So just trying to get the lotus done. You don't necessarily have to rinse out your tank. If I went to Callisto and then back to Lotus, because a little bit ain't gonna hurt, but we don't want that carryover of Callisto. So trying to spray all the Lotus at once, but also I really wish you guys could float. Now I'm going too slow in my turnaround and I can't really adjust my speed and turn. Too bad there's no gas pedal in these things. Or the auto turnaround with a sprayer. That would be cool. Well, that wasn't so bad. What else? I think I've taught you guys everything you need to know. Okay, I'm on a perfectly square 80, so we're going to bigger nozzles. I want to go faster than 12. Let's get them swapped. So I went from a size 6 to a size 10 nozzle. Should be able to go a little faster. Alright, well I just got back from town and got filled up. So I got mm, 6,400 gallons. And I'm mixed up waiting for Brody. He's two miles away. He's got a spray empty because I got a big load for him. 2290 gallons. So this is the field that we were running the deer and precision planter in. I'm just gonna walk out here and check on things. It is very dry in this field. This is some of our heavier ground. Sure looks nice though for, can't believe it. No rain and still going. But I'll guarantee you if we got an inch of rain, it would grow, I don't know, six inches a day. So this right here is what the deer planter planted. This is dad's headland pass. I, so if, if I had more time with that demo planter, I would have probably played with the turn on, turn off. Not that this is a problem. Um, we're not really over planting. I don't know, a couple got over planted there. We're, we're right at the line, but I have our planter set up on purpose to leave a gap here, maybe three corn plants worth to kind of mimic this another row so that my corn head snout isn't knocking this over also not overloading that row unit I try to have just a little bit of a gap here I know it don't maybe look the best visually but it is intended for a purpose to have a little bit of a space for that corn snout to run but other than that it looks pretty good out here given the conditions Nice straight rows though. For as light and swervy as it felt going down the field, the, the front wheel assist tractor, I expected some, you know, little sways, but oh, looks real good, really good. I see some weed pressure down in the bottom there. It's good that we're on it. We got some, not that it matters, but some volunteer beans. Brody must have missed that one. But, Overall, I'm pretty satisfied. So overall, still like checking both the corn, both corn planters did a good job. One, I wouldn't say that one outdid the other one. The thing I really liked about that deer speed planter is for one, the spacing is just a little bit better, but I'm not gonna complain about the precision one either. I mean, it's, it's out here um, and it ain't like it's terrible spacing at all. But the, ooh, it's an old cutlass, giving her. But the thing that I did like the most is the user friendliness of the deer. I mean, it's just integrated, makes sense. If you're familiar with a deer screen, I, I, that was my favorite part was just the simplicity.
I really think Brody wanted to go home for the day. It is like 6.30 at night. But it's a beautiful 200 acre field and things are going so good. I'll just make him do one more, right? So Eric was bordering a lot of the fields due to thistle. So what that means is he just, he went around the edge with, I think it was Stinger. And as you can see, the thistle is not liking it, which is what we wanted. It's definitely working. But now we're here to spray it anyways, so I don't know. I can go either way. Yes, it's nice to get rid of the thistle early on. Especially now since it's not raining, they take a lot of water and makes the corn suppressed and die. All right, there's the last fill of the night. I think that should be, we got seven, 960 acres he himself would ha will have done after he finishes this field. So not bad. Ah, I show up, there's a cable truck here and a new sprayer. That's what I like to see. All right guys, it's here. I've been waiting for it all season. But this is the another new 2400 or TA 2400 Umberfirth or Top Air Umberfirth. Unberfirth makes them. I really struggle seeing that word. I do not know the fine details if anything's different. I see this is a five sensor, boom height sensor. So that's kind of cool. Um, it looks to me like it sits higher. I'm not sure, I'll have to verify that, but it looks like it's got more clearance than ours. So definitely it's gonna be the tractor that has the clearance issues now. Just looking at it a little bit. I, I don't know. I think it's virtually the same as what Eric pulls. Uh, less, it does not have the pulsating Raven Hawkeye system on it yet. Maybe. If I'm lucky, we get time to do that. But this is a demo. We will uh, see. I'm going to talk to some guys, see if anything's different. Or I think these hoses look bigger. But virtually, we know what this is. We know what it does. I'm excited to get it out there and uh, see how it goes. But with that being said, I think it'll be in here till we're done spraying corn. And then we got a nice cleaned out sprayer that we can go back into soybeans with and finish soybeans up. And then we'll second pass and fungicide and all that, we'll get to play with this some. I'm excited, it looks nice, so shiny. Even though that uh, one that we bought, basically identical to this, is only two years old, I think. That chemical just dirties up the paint on the booms, that is. Really bad, stains it. So it's nice seeing shiny paint. What do so, you think? It's so clean. You got that field done, it was 200 acre field. You did it in? Hour and nine minutes. Hour and nine minutes. You're now timing yourself, That's huh? what the display said. <laughs> <laughs> the time works. So. so this is your new ride, Brody. You get to learn a Raven rate controller. So we have a deer ray controller on the sprayer that he runs. Uh, Eric's sprayer has a raven controller. This one we got raven controller on it so that we can possibly put Hawkeye on if that works out for time and whatnot. I don't really, I see some stuff we gotta change. We gotta put a three inch quick coupler on there. I think that comes in the box of spare parts. These look different than what Eric's sprayer is. That's Very expensive. Everything's expensive. Oh, this is expensive. Remember how much you spent on yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> I do Three remember what I spent on that on my water trailer for convenience reasons. But uh, it's got five sensors for the sonar boom height. How many does Eric have? Three only. Really? Yeah, you got an upgrade. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we got nice quarter turn valves at the end of the booms. Better than what your sprayer has. But that wasn't hard to beat. It looks like it's higher than Eric's, but I'm not gonna say that it is, but it sure it looks, looks really it looks a lot higher, just visually. It's got, it's got a pump that doesn't leak hydraulic oil like a sieve. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 
It's bad. <laughs> we should fix that. We should. <laughs> We're not going to yet. We got, uh, these need to be put up more. Yeah, it's too low. I feel like these are put on backwards. Maybe not. Yes. Just saying it all right. This is supposed to be... For one, they're supposed to be back there. Back there. And for two, it's supposed to be bolted <laughs> here and there on the top and bottom of the boom. So that's just for looks right now. Yeah, they do that. I don't know. For transportation. Maybe that's just where they're stored. We gotta get nozzles on her. Where you want bigger ones so you can go faster? Yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's nice being able to go slow though next to the edge of soybean. We need Hawkeye on it and then you can go as slow as you want, any pressure you want. Oh, so nice. Mm -hmm. So nice. What money won't buy a guy? This is nice. <laughs> He's excited. Man, I don't even have to be level anymore. Yes, that's going to be so nice. So it's got flow meter on it, so you know exactly how many gallons goes in, uh, exactly what your tank levels at. Oh, that's so nice. Th this is higher. It's definitely higher. I can barely reach it. <laughs> oh, that ain't saying much. <laughs> What's in here? I think that's our um, cab control box, possibly some fittings, probably the books, probably a cab it's harness, like really heavy. probably spare parts, probably you something you're going to drop. This is heavy. Maybe I got it. I have another spare. Yep. <laughs> Watch the bottom of the box break. It looks like she's been through a war. <laughs> Look at the size of the manual. Who do you think is going to read that? Nobody till there's trouble. Yeah, there we go. We got a new foot switch for you. Control box. What's this do? What does this do? I have no idea. You can turn your boom sections on. You can tilt it. Raise it. So you just walk around and you can check your nozzles by yourself so I can just sleep in more. Never have to put my hand up there, just sitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's a new feature that the other one did, don't have. It looks confusing though. Oh, come on. There's our three inch fill. Oops, I knew that came with. You got to learn a new box. So all your buttons will be in different places now. This was on. Get all the switches. Oh yeah. Yep. This'll do. This'll do. Now you can brag to Eric how you got the shinier sprayer with a remote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That... All right, guys. You'll see in the next video when we're getting this hooked up, rigged up, ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.